Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. And can you believe it? It has been 12 months since I unboxed the Skywatcher GTI. I've also shot with it through winter, through spring, summer, and fall, and I'm happy to report that it's still working just as it did right out of the box. And this video is about my what I liked about it and what I really didn't like about this mount. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, I do have a playlist of Skywatcher GTI videos. This was actually a series. And I did an unboxing, I did an assembly. I also showed you what 11 pounds of payload looks like on top of the Skywatcher GTI visually, because people that are new into astrophotography might not know what that actually looks like. It's actually quite a bit. I also made a video preparing you for your first night out. So what it takes to pull her a line and some basic skills you're gonna need. And also I ran you a little bit through the SinScan app just to get you guys up and running really quickly. My other video was the first night out with it. What was the guiding results and what I got for my first shot of the night sky. And it turned out really well. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, I'll put that link in the description so you guys can check that out. Also, before we get into it, I want to actually talk about a few things. So let me put this little guy over here. Maybe, well, I wanna put it over here. All right, first, before we get on with it, I wanna address a few things. I wanna address the two most asked questions about the Skywatcher GTI in my videos. The first one is, how do you mount a camera and lens on top of the Skywatcher GTI? And I've explained it a few times in the comments, but I thought it'd be really helpful to put this out on video. But what you're gonna need is a Vixen style dovetail plate, right? You can get them on Amazon, pretty cheap. Doesn't have to be this fancy. But this is just one off my regular telescope. And then you're gonna need a quarter 20 screw. And you can get this at a hardware store. It's nothing special. Just make sure you get it at the length that you need it. I like it so it's just poking out there. I don't know if you can see it there, but maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, yep, my camera's deciding not to work, but you, you get the idea. And then here's your DSLR and also a camera. And it just screws into the tripod bolt. And now it's deciding to focus on that, didn't it? It's got a mind of its own. And then all you do is put these two things together, maybe. And you want to make sure it's tight so it doesn't go anywhere. And there you have it, all right? Here's the dovetail mounted and the tripod receptacle <laughs> try the tripod um threads in the camera and this is the your 300 millimeter lens so most of you guys would probably have something like this and it just slides onto the skywatcher gti saddle so the one thing with this though and let's see are you ready All right, let's tighten down a little bit more. The one thing about this though is uh, the dovetail will allow you to balance it on the declination really well because you can slide it forward and back. The one thing it doesn't have is rotation. So what you're gonna wanna do is if you don't have a lens that doesn't have a lens collar on it from the get-go, you might be able to buy one for a lens, but that's what I would suggest. And just for visual, here's my Skywatcher GTI. And it just slides into the saddle like this, okay? And this is the ADM saddle upgrade. 
uh, but it functions the same way as the Skywatcher, the original Skywatcher GTI saddle does. So that's what it looks like on there. I just kind of wanted to put that to rest. And my second most asked question is, my Skywatcher GTI is doing really weird things. After I pull her a line, it will actually point at the ground. And nine times out of 10, it's because of this. The RA screw here, or the declination wheel, wasn't tightened back down. Whenever I've helped, I've actually helped quite a few people with this, and it has always been one of the two. So make sure you check that out if it's doing that. Like I said, it's one of the most common issues, and I found that that works nearly almost all the time. All right. Uh, also, I just wanted to mention that I have no affiliation with Skywatcher whatsoever, and the criticism is very constructive, and hopefully a Skywatcher watches this, and I mean it in the most respectful way. But saying that, let's get into my likes and also my dislikes about this mount. The first thing I really liked was its small size and weight. That made it perfect for travel. It only weighed 5.7 pounds, and there was a lot of aftermarket support for it as well. Apertura made a case, which had enough space for a mount, the cabling, counterweights, the ASI Air, and also my counterweight bar. There was also a saddle upgrade available made by ADM, and later in this video, I will tell you why that saddle upgrade is important and why you should also do it. I also love that it was battery powered with the option for plugging it into a 12 volt input. And on battery powered because it used eight AA batteries, which I ended up replacing with rechargeables, lasted for 36 hours. Also, the illuminated reticle and polar scope made it really easy to polar align as well. And thank goodness for the illumination. I know the original Skywatcher Star Adventure did not have that. Also, Skywatcher had regular nature photographers transitioning into astrophotography definitely in mind. With the help of the SynScan app, which you're able to use with your phone, it is quite possible for a photographer to get this thing up and running out of the gate very quickly. Now, I made a video about this, and if you're interested in that, I'll make sure to put that link in the description. I also love that it was a go-to mount, and it was able to point and also track deep sky objects for long periods of time. Something small that was also equally as impressive was the USB that the Skywatcher GTI came with worked right out of the gate with my ASI Air. It recognized it right from the start, and I've never had any issues with the included USB cable with the Skywatcher GTI. Most importantly was the guiding. The guiding was very accurate and very stable at about one arc second or better. There are nights where I would get 0 0.70, 0 0.80, and I'd also see it down at 0 0.50 on excellent seeing nights. So not only was this mount really small, had some really great battery life, but it was really reliable because I got consistent results with guiding night after night. It did have the occasional error, but it always recovered from them, which is really surprising for a mount this small and of its size. Okay, now for the dislikes. My first and most important dislike of this mount was the saddle that came with the Skywatcher GTI. And it wasn't actually a saddle, it was the screw that it came with. If you put your expensive telescope in there, and with the really nice dovetail it comes with, if you use the screw that Skywatcher supplied, it will mar up that nice dovetail. And it is the last thing that I want to do. So you want to make sure that you upgrade the 
saddle to the ADM saddle that is available for the Skywatcher GTI. The only drawback is, is it's a little bit expensive, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it, especially if you're going to move forward in the hobby. You will get nicer equipment, and let me tell you, you're going to be upset when that little screw puts little marks on your really nice dovetail accessories. Also, there were plastic pieces on the mount. Now, I get why Skywatcher did this. It was to drive the cost down lower, and I'm actually grateful for that. But the plastic parts that make up the mount actually gave it a very inexpensive feel, I should say. Even though it looked great and it functioned great, it's very small, and I'm nitpicking here. It just made it feel really cheap. Another thing that I really disliked was the back cap. It seemed like Skywatcher brought over this back cap from the original Star Adventure, and it had a habit of popping off the polar scope. Now, there is a fix for it. You can heat up the cap and bend the tabs outward, but... I have had really good success with it, but it does still pop off every now and then. I would have thought Skywatcher would have put threads on this cap to prevent it from falling off. And honestly, that back cap makes the product look really cool. It just finishes it off, so when it pops off in the middle of the night, it's a little frustrating. There's also a small screw that keeps the battery cover on. It covers the battery and its sole purpose is to make sure that it stays on, which it does really well, but the screw is really, really short. And because it's so short and the housing doesn't retain it in any way, it's really easy to lose. I've actually dropped it in gravel accidentally. So if you do end up losing this screw, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> I think another miss on Skywatcher's part was the fact that I can't buy the original Skywatcher GTI tripod, or at least I have a really hard time finding one. I actually had to buy the S20555 when my astronomical tripod failed. It would have been really nice for Skywatcher to make this available for people who either just bought the head mount, or in my case, had an astronomical tripod that ended up breaking and needed another one. Luckily, the S20555 is quite adequate, but it just would have been nice for Skywatcher to offer up the original tripod for sale. And lastly, what I noticed about this mount that is very consistent is guiding after Meridian Flip. This mount does not like guiding within 15 minutes of Meridian Flip. So you would have to tell ASI Air or whatever astronomical software to continue your imaging after 15 to 20 minutes. Now, most mounts have a hard time with this anyways, but because the Skywatcher GTI is a budget mount, it has a really, really hard time doing it. So just something that I wanted to add in there and make people aware of. Otherwise, guiding on the Skywatcher GTI was just great. So after 12 months, what do I think about the Skywatcher GTI? Well, I can honestly say that I really, really like the mount, and I'll continue to use it. For my purpose, I bought it as a secondary mount uh, to image alongside my main setup that was lightweight, inexpensive. Well, that is a... I loosely use inexpensive. I, I usually loosely use that term because nothing is inexpensive in this hobby, but 
for what it does, I think it is an adequate price. And if you buy it during the holidays, like this is the second year in a row where Skywatcher has made some significant price uh, reductions on there. Buy it during the holidays if you can. Uh, it's super lightweight. I can tote it around in a little bag and enjoy a lot of my older equipment because a lot of my older equipment weighs under 11 pounds. And the Skywatcher GTI is perfect for that. I also would recommend this for a beginner astrophotographer as well. Its size is a major factor because if you're a nature or landscape photographer, you already have a lot of equipment. You don't want to buy a full-blown equatorial mount that weighs like 20, 30 pounds. The Skywatcher GTI weighs under six pounds. And if you have an already nice and sturdy tripod, you can actually use that. Just make sure it's level on your tripod. So it makes transporting this uh, device really easy because of its size and weight. Also, I think that it is the perfect mount to learn uh, how to do astrophotography on since it has GoTo. Uh, the original Star Adventure didn't have GoTo functionality and I spent many nights uh, frustrated because I couldn't find a target. <laughs> but uh, I did learn the night sky, so it's kind of a give and take kind of thing. All right, so make sure you put down on the comments what your guys' likes and dislikes were about this mount, those of you that got it. And I guess I'll see you on the next one. All right, peace. <laughs>